Hello, this is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and I have some lovely vintage jewelry thrifting uh, to share with you today. I hope you're all having a great day. Um, I was able to do quite a bit of thrifting over the past two months and didn't have time to make videos, so now's my chance to share with you. Um, first off, I have this lovely gold tone uh, textured pin. I suppose uh, you could put it this way, like a smile, you could wear it this way, <laughs> like a frown. Um, and this is, pin is signed Coro, right there. Um, Coro is one of the manufacturers I have started collecting, and I found this at my local Goodwill store, which has got more jewelry now than it used to in the past. Um, Prices are a little bit higher, um, but they've also been uh, mostly signed pieces. Um, they have some jewelry jars, but I didn't see anything in the jewelry jars uh, that I would have purchased. Next is this little bar pin, a beautiful uh, little blue plastic turquoise stones. There we go. Um, three red rhinestones. Um, faux pearls in two different sizes and I didn't see anything missing from this and as I look at it now I still don't see anything missing thank goodness because sometimes these little teeny tiny plastic beads tend to uh, come unglued a beautiful uh, bar pin and again it's very difficult to see but right here whoops Got to get my fingers in the right spot right there. By my fingernail, again, it is signed Coro. So I've um, been finding a lot of uh, Coro pieces lately. I've uh, been reading that Coro continued manufacturing uh, in Canada from 79 to about 91 after the American um, business closed. So I haven't... Um, been able to get any more information in that about you know whether that jewelry was sold all over the world or just in North America but um, it's hard to tell if this is a you know where this was actually manufactured or how old it actually is then there's this um, gold tone bracelet lightweight stamp metal each little piece of metal looks like a belt buckle if you can tell that if I come a little closer there we go yeah, little belt buckles. So a nice little design. Lightweight, very wearable. Uh, and um, this is the back. Doesn't really need much cleaning. And here on the fold over clasp, if I put it the right side up, again, it is labeled Coro. I think that's it for that group of Coro pieces. Um, this is a uh, C-clasp, um, probably just a brass pin, I'm trying to get the clasp undone, it's a little tight, so there's the back, and you can see the type of, it's almost like a tube that the clasp goes into, so I have mm, no idea what the uh, age of that is, um, it's uh, a slightly different um, mechanism here on the back. It doesn't have a bar through it like the modern ones do. Um, but I don't think that's really that important. Whoops. Here, here, the front is what's really important. I thought this was just the most darling um, style of enameled pin where you can see the texture of the um, on the back of the pin, the little dotted texture showing through uh, the translucent enamel. Um, and that happens as well in the center of the flowers back here. Um, I think that's called guillotte. Whoops, I'm sorry. I lost my camera. I think that's um, called guillotte, but I'm not uh, entirely certain. But a lovely little pin. I think just a very little pretty pin to wear. These earrings, I didn't buy my first on my first trip, even though these are nice 
uh, rhinestone earrings. Um, these earrings were marked Continental. They are screw back earrings. They're in excellent shape. But I wanted to look up Continental and see what I could find out about the company first. And it turns out uh, Continental is another Canadian manufacturer. And so um, I purchased these to put in my uh, collection and do some documentation again about uh, Canadian jewelry manufacturers. Um, uh, what I recall from the reading is they used very high-end rhinestones. Um, so I'll have to do some more research and if I get some more information I'll put it uh, with this video. So that was a beautiful pair of rhinestone earrings. Who can not have enough rhinestones? And then uh, uh, um, one of the, uh, there were two trips to that particular, I guess I got to get these, two trips to that particular uh, thrift store, Goodwill store. This is a pair of Sarah Coventry earrings. I don't know if you can see on the back of the clip here. It says Sarah Coventry. It doesn't say Sarah Coventry Canada. There's hardly enough room for that. Um, but these are, I thought, were interesting clips. There's just a little post here at the front so there'd be barely anything on the front of the ear uh, and then these beautiful uh, faux pearl um, sort of chandelier earrings um, I can maybe separate them you might see them a little better there we go so Sarah Coventry is also um, a manufacturer that I've uh, begun collecting in, in more seriousness and I thought those were an interesting pair of earrings to add to the collection. Um, a few other items I purchased. This item I have to sort of dump out of the bag to show you. It, this was a beautiful vintage glass uh, necklace and I was straightening out the beads to hang it on my necklace rack and I managed to break the string. How I did that I have no idea. Obviously it was a, a break waiting to happen. If I can get this untangled you'll see the beauty of this necklace. Oh maybe not. Alright well I'm gonna just uh, I gotta save all these beads to put it back together but here on the table you can see these beautiful clear um, there we go. Yeah, it's a little better. So you can see there's frosted glass discs, clear discs, and large and small glass beads, um, as well as these larger uh, oval glass beads in the necklace. It was a good length. Um, it felt really good on, and I managed to break the string. So um, I, I'm not heartbroken or anything. I can easily repair it. I've uh, repaired my milk glass necklace that I've had for years that, where the string broke um, but uh, I won't be able to wear it until I get it fixed but a real bargain even though I did uh, manage to make it fall apart mine I'm just gonna put the loose beads back in the bag and I'll put this off to the side so you can remember that this is one of my thrift items I don't I think I've lost any beads. Of course, it fell on the floor, and I think I got all the beads, but I'll have to look under the dresser. That's where they tend to go. Um, something unusual that I picked up is this, um, all of a sudden twisted. Uh, this is a, I think I can get it there. This is a glass and plastic bead. These two light strands are plastic and the other five stands are, strands are glass. Um, this is actually a lovely design as a necklace and this was a designer that I hadn't encountered. Um, so it's a modern, I would say modern necklace based on the, uh, the hook and eye closure. But you can see from the little tag, get it there, there we go. So this is Sigrid Olson, 
And I looked up Sigrid Olsen, and there's about 12 pieces being sold as 12 as vintage pieces on Etsy. Um, 45 of her pieces um, on eBay, and over 120, or slightly over 120 on Posh. Um, prices were all over the place, but they, um, I didn't look at solds, so I can't really say, but I didn't find anything identical to this, but the multi-strand necklaces that were not, um, stone or semi-precious beads were selling in about the $30 range. Um, so that's, um, uh, quite a pretty necklace. I like that blue. It's very summery color. The next piece I have is a, uh, a pink quartz uh, bracelet, just a stretchy bracelet, but in excellent condition. A um, dollar at my Mission thrift store, that's local. Good price for uh, quartz beads. Um, here's another dollar bracelet. This is uh, hematite and amethyst uh, with a lobster claw clasp. It's not marked silver, but again, a dollar for uh, amethyst beads. Not bad. And then at the same store, let me just get it, it untangled here. This is a, just a double strand gold tone chain um, hook clasp. I think it's new, but I don't have very many gold tone chains for some of the uh, the fashion pendants that I have, so I picked this up um, again at my Mission Thrift Store. And also when I was there, I picked up this broken bracelet. Um, I was looking at the jewelry wall and I saw this bracelet hanging there and in this broken state and it's missing one of the um, stretchy cords that it would have had but I thought each individual station was quite lovely so for 25 cents I was able to purchase this um, if I can get the stations to turn around and show you how pretty they are with rhinestones in the center round ones with large rhinestones smaller rhinestones so very attractive um, and this can be easily restrung as a stretchy bracelet, but I think I might use the uh, each individual bead um, in other jewelry, sort of spread them out with some crystals or pearls and things, re totally repurpose it. Again, at my Mission Thrift Store, this is a little stretchy uh, amethyst bead bracelet. I don't think these are silver, but I have no way of testing them. And I haven't tried cleaning them to see how they react. But again, for a dollar, um, a lovely little bracelet and uh, can be then repurposed with the amethyst beads. I love amethyst. The final necklace that I picked up, and again it's tangled, um, kind of matches the Sacred Olsen one. Um, I might not be able to fix this. Um, each of these little strands is supposed to go down back here. Oh, there we go. Okay, if I just be a little patient, I can fix it. All right. So this was two dollars. This is um, a nice uh, dichroic glass pendant on um, a group of seed bead and shell uh, strands, lobster claw clasp. Um, I've been uh, looking for necklaces with these types of pendants so that I can repurpose them more into statement necklaces. This one's just a bad design because the swirl of the glass keeps falling out. Um, 
and I'm sure that there is a better way of reassembling this. I'd like to see this with some larger blue statement beads as well, some of the beautiful copper color that's in that pendant. And uh, kind of nicely matches that uh, Sigrid Olson. So these are my most recent uh, thrift finds. I hope you've enjoyed seeing them. And I hope you'll return for some more jewelry thrifting in Canada. This is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes. Please like, subscribe, and share. And uh, leave me your comments. Um, I always enjoy conversing with people um, about a video or about my thrifting finds. Thank you.